Do you want to do the stat of the day or do you want to give us your political musings from last night? I don't, uh, I'm happy to give you my political musings. I was pleasantly surprised. I don't have any kind of, I don't know what you would call it, coherent analysis, except that I think candidates matter more than maybe people thought they did, including me. Like the, the, some of the true loons were unceremoniously voted down by people, which is giving me a, an enormous boost of confidence that the, we're not, the country isn't about to completely fall apart. A lot of the election denying secretaries of state in battleground states lost. That's an enormous deal because those like Brad Raffensperger in Georgia in 2020, those are the people who actually have to do the work of certifying elections. And there are still a couple that are yet to be determined in Nevada and Arizona and places like that. But the generally the, the uh, red wave did not emerge, certainly not the red tidal wave that some people were predicting as late as Tuesday morning. And a lot of the people who just fundamentally don't appear to want to participate in an actual representative democracy were booted. And that is an enormous, uh, I mean, Mike was taunting me yesterday with the idea of a red wave and it is an enormous relief that we seem to have avoided that. So you are encouraged, you are hopeful, you are not, uh, you are not uh, despondent about Georgia somehow running off when you don't have co uh, you know, candidates of equal merit. I'm not, I mean, look, Brad Raffensperger was reelected. That guy was, was by name called to task by Trump at the, at the worst point of Trump's presidency, which is the time between when he lost the actual election and January 6th. Brad Raffensperger was the focal point of the assault on the Georgia election system. He's the guy who was on the other end of the line when Trump said, I need to find 11,000 votes. So the idea that Georgia citizens actually not like not only, you know, got rid of him, but reelected him is an enormous sign that things aren't as bad as maybe we thought they were. Look, Herschel Walker and Raphael Warnock are probably going to a runoff. That's bananas. This, as Jamel said yesterday on your show, this is a pastor at Martin Luther King Jr.'s former church against a guy who doesn't know where he is or what is happening at any given moment of his day. In any arena of his life, he doesn't, he is confused. He today compared himself in an interview to Ricky Bobby from, from uh, McKay's movie. Uh, from uh, I was very Talladega Nights. That was very patronizing. Oh, that, that, little, it, that little McKay flick, Talladega Nights. Yeah. I could momentarily couldn't remember it. I apologize to my good friend, Adam McKay, who I've split Ooh, a bill with. Louie, hit the button. Hit it. Look at me, Louie. You promised him you wouldn't do that. You, you promised me you wouldn't do it. That was a trap and you fell into it. You believe me. But Herschel would so win Herschel, a runoff, wouldn't he? I mean, Herschel. Her <laughs> <laughs> he should win now any that, runoff. Now that should get loser game show sound. He should win any, I know, any I got, I got the highest praise. Put, put, it, put it on the poll, Guillermo. Uh, would Herschel win all of the runoffs? Yeah, we got, imagine him and McConnell just sprinting against each other. Put him against every politician. The point is, they that's probably going to a runoff. That might end up like it did in 2020, um, determining control of the Senate. But I don't think that Republicans want to have to talk about Herschel Walker for two more months when there's no other races to talk about. Like they've kind of slid on him because the, it was the midterms. All this stuff was going on. If the nation's attention is now focused on Herschel Walker and the kinds of things he says and does for uh, like six or eight weeks, I don't think that's good for Republicans because he is a complete ding dong who doesn't know his ass from his elbow. And I think that's going to be really embarrassing. So all of this stuff that was potentially truly terrible, I think, for the future of the country, much of it did not materialize. But I guess Dan's argument would probably be that, well, why does Herschel Walker even get 49% oh, of the also, vote no, in the first place? but it's also where I live. It's also what I see happening where I live. And I've seen Miami and Florida be 20 years ahead of the entire political curve in this country from 2000 when we, we – what happens here – spreads and and i'm i'm scared of the dude who wins easily in our state i'm scared of him in, in this cycle though it appeared as though it's not that miami was ahead is that or, or florida was ahead is that it's separate 
is its own separate thing. It had no connection to anything that happened anywhere else in the country last night. There wasn't a similar DeSantis-like effect in other places. There wasn't a similar Rubio-like effect in other... The only kind of sliver of a comparison point is the Rio Grande Valley districts that are right on the border that some people are surprised went Republican. But there aren't really that many comparison points to what happened in Florida and what happened in, in, in other places. And a lot of South Texas, which was predicted to, to the Republicans thought they could sweep South Texas, and they didn't. And a lot of those districts actually voted Democratic. I think Witte is right. I mean, I look, this is a completely uneducated opinion here. Um, but I, I think it's more and more seems like Florida is its own nation and has its own voting patterns and has its own uh, collection of, of um, people of different uh, ethnic backgrounds and and viewpoints and whatever you want to call it who in it's just it's, its own thing i i mean i could obviously i have no idea what i'm talking about but it really does feel like florida is one set of voting uh results and the rest of the country has other trends that you could maybe follow or track or something let's go ahead and play stat of the day here and get to the numbers portion of the proceedings start of the day start of the day it is the start of the day Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. The stat of the day is presented by Zip Recruiter. Zip Recruiter, the smartest way to hire. I have two election-related stats of the day for you. Yep. First is Aubrey Huff, career doubles, 360 total votes in the Solana <laughs> Beach School District governing board member trustee area one in San Diego. 291. Yeah. <laughs> Democracy wins. <laughs> Unfortunately... <laughs> There were about 1,800 votes cast for Robert what? Huff, who he did not win. He, yeah. he lost like 80-20 in that election? He lost 80. The up-to-date totals are 82.5 to 17.5. Yeah. That's, that's hilarious. Uh, but he, I love here's that. the real stat of the day. This was sent to me, alerted to me uh, by Chris Whittingham, but there's been more developing information since. Chuck Grassley of Iowa won yet another term in the United States Senate. Chuck Grassley was born on September 17, 1933, before the invention of the chocolate chip cookie. He is so old. Here's how old. To, this is according to at Emma Tolkien on Twitter. Chuck Astley is three years younger than the invention of scotch tape and sliced bread. He is the same age as FM radio. He is two years older than canned beer, nylon, and radar. Four years older than the jet engine and photocopier. Five years older than ballpoint pens and six years older than helicopters. And really incredibly, and this is the most incredible stat of all, he is not the oldest member of the United States Senate because California Senator Dianne Feinstein was born about three months before him. <laughs> <laughs> what? That is crazy. Go over that list again, please. You said something in the middle that, that chopped out, and I don't know what was the most impressive thing on that list. I can't believe the chocolate chip cookie is, yeah. uh, is that age. Three years younger, Chuck Grassley, three years younger than Scotch Tape and Sliced Bread, the same age as FM Radio, two years older than Canned Beer, Nylon, and Radar, four years older than the Jet Engine and Photocopier, five years older than Ballpoint Pens, and six years older than Helicopters. More like Chuck Astley. Hey. hey! Canned canned beer. Wait, what? Wait a minute! Hey! Oh, hey. Just, hey! Canned beer is so good, Mike, because I am now imagining beer. You can only get it in a saloon in the Wild West because <laughs> you 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 can't get it in cans. How else are you yeah. gonna get it? You get it in like a wine bottle that has a cork in it or something to keep the beer from fermenting longer. He's an old person. He's almost 90, and he won easily. Uh, term <laughs> limits, be, probably? Yeah, term limits, age limits, something, man. I think I, mean, I think if he finishes his term at age 95, he will have served 48 years in the U.S. Senate. There was a report on Twitter uh, a while ago, a couple of years ago, and I think an article was written about it somewhere, that, that there was a... 
a pharmacist in Washington, D.C., who anonymously told people that he routinely fills Alzheimer's prescriptions for members of the, of the United States Congress. And then everybody started speculating on who that was. That's not good. Mm. Uh, thank you, Mike. We will talk to you again tomorrow and forever.